is again Terry. Uh, he needs no introduction and he'll tell us about dynamics. Uh, yeah, so first I'll tell you about a project where we are working with a uh, in, uh, simple interacting a pair of species, okay, but a physiological study uh, of what's happening in the uh, system. Uh, then in the second half, yeah, what's the problem? Yeah. So then in the, in the second half, I would like to then go uh, use a lesson learned there and describe a different model of uh, community dynamics and, and with a focus uh, on getting a model with a few parameters that can uh, generate predictions right, on, on the on community dynamics. All right, so yes, okay, so we already talked about species diversity and uh, this uh, landmark study was already mentioned a few times. Uh, it was really <laughs> That's what it worked last time. Let's try the other uh, connector. Oh, okay. Right. So, uh, so there was this uh, uh, lemma studied. Uh, by Alvaro Sanchez's lab and together with Pankaj Mehta, uh, theorists, uh, that uh, got many people's attention, uh, including ours. So they uh, took, uh, uh, I guess, uh, but, uh, community bacteria from the wild, from the uh, plant leaf in this case, and did the type of a gross dilution study that uh, um, Martino is describing. And uh, the key to this experiment is that they feed, uh, they feed these bacteria in a very simple medium, just glucose as a carbon source, right? And uh, then uh, after a number of uh, these uh, gross dilution cycles, you get to a stable community, at least uh, by uh, this kind of a composition, that it's more than one, okay? And, uh, and that's uh, surprising because it violates the um, principles of a competitive exclusion where we think one species per niche, and uh, uh, for this type of simple problem, one thinks about uh, nutrient niches. Right, and um, <clears throat> so now the kind of explanations uh, for the existence of uh, this diverse community uh, is the uh, cross feeding. Okay, so this was actually, as told by me, was uh, Pankaj Mehta, was the theorist, was actually driving this project. So nobody would even do such an experiment biased by the uh, this uh, competitive exclusion principle. Why would even grow a community with a single nutrient source? Okay, and uh, from his Theoretical study thought that might be possible, and, uh, and indeed it was uh, uh, possible. So anyway, that, that was a, uh, was described to me from a, a Pankaj, and uh, so 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 this is a typical type of a uh, uh, model. So you have nutrient uh, that's consumed by a number of a species. Uh, in this case, we have just one nutrient, uh, glucose, and then these species uh, excrete uh, the metabolites, and then metabolites serve as the nutrients for uh, for uh, other species. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> the, uh, so coexistence is possible uh, even in steady state. So these models were solved uh, in steady state, okay? Now I, I, I look at uh, uh, this, um, uh, this, this kind of explanation, rationalization, and I was not convinced by it based on 
what I know about, about bacterial physiology. And the reason is a matter of a number. Okay? So to, in order for excretion to support, uh, to sustain a diverse community, diverse community meaning that uh, there's at least 10% of biomass that's something else that's not you, right? I mean, more, more likely we're talking about 50, maybe 70%. One species is probably not more than dominant then. Uh, well, I mean, there needs to be microscopic presence of a number of uh, uh, species in order to, uh, to be a diverse community. And for that to happen, uh, the guy who's primarily taking the, uh, the nutrients will need to excrete basically order of half of what it takes in. And that's a lot to ask for for somebody that's growing in steady state, okay? And, um, <clears throat> right, so typically it takes uh, 30 or 40 millimolar of a carbon to, uh, to, to uh, carbon atoms uh, to generate one OD of cells, and one OD is, let's say, 10 to the 9 uh, cells per milliliter, okay? And then that means that you need to excrete stuff of the order of a millimolar per OD, okay? Uh, but when I look at the actual excretion, like the, you know, that, that's the measurements that, that were done, uh, there's typically 100 times lower, okay? And so there are some, so we went through the literature, there were some very well-cited examples, let's so say, uh, happening in the ocean, oh, so much of the CO2, like 80% of the CO2 is being excreted, or so something like that, okay? But when you look into these experiments, uh, the excretion of carbon deposits during uh, growth, uh, unlimited growth was, was actually quite moderate, okay? And a big excretion comes after they ran out of, say, nitrogen or something else, okay? But that's not surprising. If you're limited, sure, you, you, you can, you can uh, dump uh, uh, the, the unlimited supply, and that the, the, the unlimited supply that's produced will not help you in community uh, uh, diversity because you're limited by nitrogen, okay? So then, so I, I, so, so I have this uh, conundrum in my mind, how is that possible? I, I, so I wasn't quite believing in this uh, uh, excretion. Just, it's, it's a very kind of a communistic type of a description, right? And everybody's helping each other, all, all great. But the, how do you prevent somebody just, why, why, would, why would cells do that when they're basically happy growing uh, by themselves exponentially? Okay. Yeah. Anaerobic growth. Huh? For anaerobic growth, would you expect to have the sizable excretion of carbon when you're limited by energy? Yeah, yeah. so I, I get to that. So there's some exceptions, right? And uh, the, uh, so there's, there's, of course, the synthetic uh, stuff that, that you know, you, micro cannot grow by themselves. The, 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 they can only grow by the cross-feeding product, okay? But we're talking about uh, natural free-living uh, bacteria, right? Uh, the, we have uh, this uh, fermentation process during anaerobiosis, right? So without oxygen, right, organisms invariably excrete lots of stuff. But there's lots of stuff, you know, one organism cannot use, most likely another organism cannot use either, and they're even toxic to, to most people, okay? Then it takes a very special collection of a bacteria that can actually take this, what would be normally uh, poisonous to others, and to use them. And then, the, and then it takes the next one to use that, eventually pushing the flux all the way to, only you get to CO2 and methane, then, then they're out of the system, okay? If you don't get there, it stops somewhere in between, and part of, uh, builds up, everybody's dead, right? So, so it's very difficult. So we're not talking about that kind of processes, okay? And uh, uh, aerobic uh, fermentation, because uh, many of you know that uh, E. coli, bacillus, many organisms, uh, they excrete acetate, Right, when growing fast, okay? And uh, this, the, the amount that's excreted is almost, uh, say, 10%. Okay, so we're getting maybe a little bit into uh, this number range, but still not a lot, okay? So if you just excrete 10%, I mean, th th it's, it's not uh, uh, that much. And, and what's excreted is for a very special reason and, and a very defined product, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, so then we decided to uh, take a look at uh, uh, what's going on. Well, th this was a, on the one hand, we're thinking about these complicated communities, the reading and the kind of a, the trying to digest the result. But on the other hand, uh, we uh, was very uh, sort of grateful that uh, a, a group of uh, uh, ecologists that uh, invited me to join this uh, collaboration, um, the, um, headed by uh, Otto, and I had no experience in ecology, right? So then, then we start to learn about things outside of E. coli, and we said, well, let's uh, just play with them, just put, uh, two strings together and see uh, what happens, right? 
And uh, so this is the work I'm going to be uh, describing. It's by a former postdoc, Kapil uh, Amanes, and it was published uh, just earlier this year. Right? So we took uh, the system that the auto uh, described, that the uh, chitin uh, beads and the collecting uh, marine bacteria on, on part of chitin beads, and there's a succession dynamics uh, that, that uh, happens as a function of time, so various uh, bacteria get onto them. Uh, he, he said yesterday mentioned that initially there's a wave of uh, uh, bacteria that lands and there are chitin degraders and then other stuff coming, right? So we took two species. One is a vibrio species that uh, degrades chitin. And then there's another uh, species that, uh, that happens later. We don't know what it is. So it's well, just take them and uh, just put them together and see what happens, okay? And uh, uh, so the, uh, we, we grew them on chitin. So uh, the Cerebio species, the Tacon degrader, uh, grew as advertised. And the other species, uh, B species, did not grow. Okay? And then we find the same thing for, gluconac, uh, for growth on gluconac, which is a monomer of a chitin. Okay? So then we forget about chitin. Let's just look at the monomer. Right? And um, so if uh, you look at the growth of uh, this A species, uh, Vibrio, on um, uh, chitin alone, uh, you see that uh, the blue line is a gluconac, so gluconac is disappearing, give you the yield of a gluconac. Acetate is being excreted, and ammonia is being excreted, okay? And that's easy to understand. If you look at the molecule of gluconac, it, it's got an uh, acetyl group on it, it's got an amine group on it, and it's a glucose otherwise, okay? So basically, it, uh, it, it kicks up the acetate group, it takes some ammonia for itself, and it releases the remaining uh, ammonia, okay? Now we take the acetate group, uh, the acetate and the ammonia, and the feed it on uh, 3BO5 uh, on, on the uh, uh, individually on, on, on B, the B grow, uh, but uh, actually A does not grow. So, so the A species uh, cannot grow on uh, 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 acetate alone. Yeah. Um, when you say it, it excretes acetate and uh, ammonium, these are the two products that are mostly excreted. But do they do they do they excrete something else? Do they what? Excrete something else? Uh, very little. I mean, just uh, in, in 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 this phase. Okay. The, as far as we measure, we don't we don't see much. Yeah. But so you measure with metabolomics, or you actually uh, with the metabolomics? Yeah. Okay. You, you know, you always see something, but nothing. I'm, I'm always talking about flux. How much flux be becomes noticeable? Okay. okay. Not much. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So actually, the amount of acetate. Uh, that's ex excreted is basically the sum of what you expect out of an acetate meta uh, overflow metabolism plus the amount of every, every molecule it gets out acetate plus it excretes something a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that's the uh, base uh, state we are uh, talking about. And this leads to a very simple scenario uh, of uh, uh, what was the word, just commensalism, uh, right? So B is basically just uh, taking the waste product, uh, the, the excretion product of uh, A, right? Now, if uh, it, it, in a medium with a, a weak buffer, so for example, you know, we use the ocean water buffer of a two millimolar of a bicarbonate, which is just what's fixed by the equilibration with the CO2 in the atmosphere, okay? Then as, a, as you dump on the order of a two millimolar, uh, then the pH drops, okay? And then uh, so there's a, a, a toxic effect on uh, 101, and it's great that 3 vo 5 can take it, so now this becomes a standard uh, scenario of a uh, simplest example of a centrifuge, right? So one is taking away, removing the waste product, okay? And, um, <clears throat> okay, so, so now for this classical scenario, immediately what one has in mind is that a, there will be a, a crossing point with a stable coexistence of the two strain, right? As long as the effect of the waste product uh, is a, uh, has a stronger uh, deleterious effect on the producer than on the consumer. Right? So, so that you, you have these two uh, curve crossing. Well, this turned out not to be the case. So when you vary uh, pH by itself, you look at an individual organism, actually uh, the, uh, the consumer, the CBO5, which uh, grows on acetate, right? uh, but then it's actually more sensitive uh, to pH. Right? <laughs> then as a result, this uh, standard scenario does not occur. Okay, and uh, so meaning this uh, acid has actually a yeah, stronger effect on B than now. Okay, so this was uh, really a shock because uh, maybe biased uh, in our own ways, I'm just seeking for mathematical simplicity, just assume that the, the first scenario is always gonna happen. Okay, but actually there's a 50-50 chance that you know, the second scenario is gonna happen. Okay, you produce some uh, toxic stuff, so why should the, always the producer be hit more than the consumer? <coughs>
Sorry, just a clarification. So with the strong buffer, do you have coexistence based on the growth? Yeah, so with, with the strong buffer, they just grow by themselves, right? So okay. exponential until, until everything is used up. But the, and they coexist because the second one grows on acetate. The, huh? They coexist when growing together. Well, they, with, a strong, with a strong buffer in batch culture, of course, there's no issue of a coexistence or not. I mean, they, they no, but if you, grow, if, they you were doing, if you were doing a serial dilution, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, with zero dilution, they coexist. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm not showing you data, but it's a, it's in a paper. Yeah, with strong buffer, you do zero dilution, they just coexist. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> All right. So then, okay. So then, what's what's uh, going on in this case? So so yeah. So there's half of the scenario basically was a blank. We do not consider. Okay. The uh, so what what's happening there? And then you you think about it okay, because. Uh, a always grows faster. A is growing on glucose. I mean, just faster than growing on acetate. Okay, and A produces acetate, right? So, you know, always acetate, acetate is going to get overwhelmed. I mean, you know, because exponential growth, there's nothing you you you, you can you can beat. Okay, and uh, so if it's more toxic, uh, it's it's more sensitive to acetate. Yeah, yeah. If B is more sensitive, the, the, they're just going to crash at some point. Okay, then you can predict uh, at which point it will crash because we know the yields and everything, the excretion, and indeed it crashes uh, uh, the, at some point as it builds up and then it's out, the system is out of business. Okay, and if you look at uh, uh, here the growth curve at the top uh, figure, and you see indeed it crashes, the culture crashes, and that's where pH drops the orange curve. All right, and uh, then if you look at the uh, Gruknek, uh, an acetate, so pH drop corresponding to the acetate rising. Okay, and the growth neck was only like half consumed at that point. Okay, uh, so the system just freezes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the so the so, yeah the classical centrifuge scenario does not apply, right? And if you look into individual uh, species, so the OD just to tell you the sum total of the biomass, you see that actually uh, the A species dies very quickly. Okay, uh, it crashes as, as uh, uh, within, a, within a day, it, it reduces three orders of magnitude. Yeah. You say the centrifuge is a good Yes, very good. We'll, we'll get to that. Yes, it, it, it kind of freezes, uh, the OD freezes. Something's still happening, and that's key to, to, to what happens. Okay. <clears throat> right. Um, uh, okay, so, so basically it, it freezes, and, and uh, uh, Vibrio just dies very rapidly. Uh, under uh, under this uh, 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 low pH in a low pH situation, okay. So then we do the uh, twenty four hour uh, gross dilution cycle, right? And we do not uh, certain this kind of a system. We do not expect uh, coexistence, and of course we get coexistence. So <laughs> well, well, what actually happened was we first got a coexistence, right? And we try to understand. We thought it's a standard scenario, and it's not a standard scenario. Okay. You do this for high buffer, you get coexistence, nothing fishy. But with a weak buffer, you get into this weird situation. So, so the first, after the first cycle, first day, indeed, there's a three-order drop of the A species. Okay, but then after three days, they, they get into equilibrium and then they're fine. Is it clear? <clears throat> All right. <coughs> All right. So, uh, say so they do coexist. Okay, and if you look at the glucnac and acetate, you see that after three days, when they get into a, a stable cycle. Like the system was able to consume all carbon. Okay. <clears throat> so and immediately uh, our our friends were challenging us. Well, are you sure? You, I mean, this is not mutation, right? I mean, the, 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 the strains are changing and all that. Yes, uh, we're sure that because uh, you can repeat this process, take take the product after five five cycles to do exact same thing happens. Okay. All right. So uh, the but then. Now we say, well, what's going on? And then just to check, we change the dilution time to six hours. Okay, so in six hours, we choose six hours because during the first six hours, everything in exponential growth. Okay, uh, given the, the initial inoculation of the we are uh, using, and uh, so nothing fishy should be going on. And um, indeed, uh, if we just have, yeah, so if we do a very uh, rapid dilution, then uh, it's only only. Uh, only A survives, B doesn't, just B cannot keep up with A. Okay, so this tells us that there's some kind of a weird thing that's happening in the stationary phase outside of a six hour growth phase, okay, that is making this coexistence possible. Yes, question? Oh, okay, all right. All right, so then we look at uh, the dynamics 
during the cycle. Okay, so we do a number of cycles. After five cycles, we're in what we call a stable cycle, and then we did measurements uh, in, in between. Okay, and you see some very interesting behavior. Okay, so this is a uh, 40x dilution. It's doing in, in our experiment, right? You see that first of all, uh, uh, basically the system stops, uh, the growth stops after about half a day, and then after that, there's no death. So in a stable cycle, there's no death, even though in the first cycle, there's massive death. Okay, so it got itself out of the uh, death regime. And then um, the, there's also, in the initial six hour, uh, there's like a, a, a 101 is not growing. There's a long lag. Okay? But despite 101 not growing, 305 is growing. Okay? So, so B is supposed to rely on A to, to, to make stuff, right, to grow. Okay? But A is not growing, but B is growing. All right, so, <coughs> uh, so then we, when we make, uh, measure the uh, uh, acetate and gluconate, we see that around 12 hours when things stop, like the uh, acetate peaks and then rapidly drops. Okay. So now the rapid drop explains the lack of death, right? So the, the lack of de the death is caused by drop in pH, and if acetate is gone, then there'll be no death, okay? And, uh, okay, so then the interesting thing is, of course, what happens uh, in this, in the, this it's a brief, so several hours regime where acid is rising and then dropping. <clears throat> okay, so then we zoom, zoom uh, into this regime, and you see that in this regime, actually, uh, so, so as, uh, as uh, acid is excreted, uh, 3 bo uh, 5 slow down, right? And then, then, then actually it picks up again, okay? And you know, uh, before, and it's actually growing at a faster rate in this regime. And this faster increase, uh, we presume, is what's responsible for acetate uh, di uh, disappearing. And uh, okay, so then we uh, measure. Okay, so first by uh, in our lab by HPLC, uh, we find the clear excretion of a, uh, uh, the, the major excretion at the order of a, a millimolar uh, per OD, right, of a pyruvate and a lactate and some glutamine and other stuff. Okay, just, just during that window. And, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, with Uwe Sauer's uh, uh, lab's uh, help, and then we also uh, did the metabolomics and see all kinds of things that's excreted uh, during that window. Not before, right? There's, there's very little before, uh, during this window. Okay, so uh, what's going on? So then we did a whole bunch of uh, uh, experiments to sort of get to a picture, but I'm not going to give, uh, give you the process uh, of uh, how we got to the picture. I'm just going to tell you eventually what happens, okay? And I'm gonna build in basically, first of all, address the question, well, what happens uh, when acetate builds and pH drop? Why cells uh, stop growing, okay? And that was actually a, a study we first did, did on E. coli, uh, a parallel project that was going on in the lab, okay? So we have a gluconac uh, uh, being consumed uh, by cells, and uh, uh, the, the uh, yeah, so it goes through the, the, the usual, the basic glucose, and it goes through the usual glycolytic uh, uh, stuff. And then it excretes, uh, it, it kicks out an acetic group, and it just forms acetic acid. Acetic acid is a small neutral molecule. It can cross into the membrane, okay? So acetic acid concentrate inside and outside uh, is the uh, same. Now, uh, the acetic acid, of course, uh, in each compartment is in uh, coexistence with uh, the acetate anion and with the proton, and, uh, and the, uh, the, the, the partition is given by the local uh, pH, okay? So <clears throat> then there's a, uh, actually a very uh, striking result uh, due to Russell uh, many uh, years ago that then the, if you take a ratio of the acetate concentration uh, in the two regime, well, they're just given by the difference of uh, pH, right? Uh, because the uh, uh, HAC, the acetic acid concentration is the same, okay? Now, if you have a pH 5 outside and a pH 7 outside, the ratio is 100, okay? So that means if you have a 3 millimolar acetate outside, that's where the uh, acid crashes, you have 300 millimolar inside, okay? Now you should, you're supposed to be shocked by 300 millimolar of stuff inside cells. Okay, because uh, you know, the typical the osmolarity of this system is, is uh, you know, four or 500 millimolar, and you're basically an appreciable part of the it's, you know, osmolarity, okay? So in these cells, normally they, uh, they balance osmolarity by producing glutamate, uh, some other osmolites uh, in the cell, okay? But then when you shove that much uh, acetate into the cell, and there's nothing they can do about it, it's just a physical chemistry, right? Uh, then, well, what do they do? The osmolarity still has to be balanced, right? So then what they do is they lower the 
all of the metabolites in, inside, uh, inside the cell, okay? So lots of stuff get kicked out, in particular glutamate, aspartate, TCA product, they, they all get kicked out, right? And uh, uh, i just show you one piece of measurement, but then we did extensive metabolomic study uh, in, in this paper on the system. And what you see is this is total metabolite of the cell with the, at the norm, without acetate. This is, this is data for E. coli, the similar type of things going on for one or one. And uh, uh, then with, uh, with uh, this uh, 30 millimolar of acetate in the, uh, at the low pH, then you see uh, acetate replaces uh, half of the, uh, the internal metabolites. Okay, and uh, so at, yeah, so this plot shows that as you um, at a fixed uh, external pH, uh, as acetate concentration increase, then some of the endogenous product decrease, and uh, this increase in a way that the total is balanced. Okay, so it's like a, it, it's like it's like when you're basically you're filling the cell with useless metabolites and kicking out the useful metabolites, and that's what, why uh, growth decreases. Yeah. Uh, during this transient, because of these osmotic uh, processes, you might see dramatic uh, cell size changes. Did you Maybe. Uh, the, the, I mean, the, well, transient everything. So this study is done in steady state, right? And so, yeah, but then during transient, of the course, more where happens. you have an osmotic shock, basically. Uh, yeah, so during osmotic shock, all kind of, yeah, but this, this is kind of a, uh, it's like a yeah, hypoosmotic shock. You have lots of stuff, and the stuff will get kicked out. So within 15 seconds, glutamates are being kicked out. Okay, but then they reach a new steady state where production of all these metabolites are reduced so that they, they don't in, in the excrete in the long term. Okay, so to keep this uh, concentration. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, another thing is uh, with uh, lots of acetate uh, coming in, they grab all of the CoA. Okay, so that so that normal glycolysis cannot go down from pyruvate to uh, co, uh, down to a TCA cycle, right? And uh, uh, the so then the cell continue to take a uh, uh, neck and excrete uh, pyruvate out. Okay, lactate is a very number of pyruvate. It's needed to balance uh, uh, re reduction power. Okay, and uh, uh, so that's what E. coli is doing. That's what one is doing. Why does it do that? Presumably, we say that it's it's using it to generate some ATP to do to to fight uh, to to keep things going. Okay, and then this also explains that when when the carbon source is gone, then it just dies rapidly. Okay, so it's it's ex so it's continue excreting stuff in this case lactin and pyruvate, right? Uh, to to get some so to get some energy out. They cannot use TCA. Okay, because the TCA um, uh, requires the TCA intermediates, which are basically wiped out by, by this thing that, that hits it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, everybody okay with this? Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, so and, and this is an intrinsic effect of a, of a weak acid. You can try different the butyrate, papyrinate, whatever, but they, they, they have a, uh, this type of uh, effects. All right, so what, what's happening on the 3 uh, the side of uh, the, the consumer 3 bo 5 okay, so a normal pH, uh, there are anyway acetate uh, eaters, so acetate comes in in a normal way, right, and then they get uh, incorporated into uh, the TCA cycle, and through the glycosylate shunt, they go up through gluconeogenesis, right? Now, at low pH, again, same thing happens, the acetate overwhelms everybody, right? And the stuff uh, gets kicked out, and you can see that uh, uh, 3BO5, this is by itself, uh, excretes uh, glutamate, aspartate, and the stuff, right? Until uh, several hours later, basically, when all the products are drained, there's no more to excrete, and the reaction starts, okay? Um, and uh, without the TCA intermediates, of course, uh, gluconeogenesis doesn't go, and it just comes to a standstill, right? So now you can see what happens uh, when you put the two together. Okay, in the one case, one is producing uh, uh, pyruvate and lactate, which is just called pyruvate, right? And uh, then, uh, the, uh, so pyruvate could be taken up uh, by uh, 3 bo 5 right? And what it's taking up, then can do, and it can go to uh, places. It can go up and it can go down, okay? And uh, uh, when pyruvate uh, uh, refills the TCA uh, pool, then uh, uh, the, we, we can have a, uh, we can rescue the TCA cycle, and once that's rescued, well, then there's a way to get rid of acetate. So then it can basically it's a way to burn acetate into CO2, right? And uh, so then eventually uh, acetate gets burned off. And uh, <clears throat> okay, well, you see that just burning off acetate is not enough because then uh, on the other side, glucanate is still uh, producing acetate. You still you can st uh, still have this problem. Okay, but now in a stable cycle, 
the timing has been arranged such that just as 3BO5 is recovering, burning of the acetate, uh, the gluconate is gone. Okay, so there's a delicate balance that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a sort of a reached by the system uh, autonomously. So at that point, then there's no more production and, and uh, just everything comes to a standstill and they get ready for the next cycle. Okay, now when they're ready, 3BO5 is ready to go immediately. Okay, when glucotex uh, resupply, 101 cannot grow because it's depleted. I mean, many of its metabolites are depleted. Okay, so there's a long lag, right? And when glucose comes in, it still processes the pyruvate, gets the energy, and it, it gets us reveal 5 to grow, but then uh, it takes a while for itself to recover before it can grow again. So that's the, the picture basically explains all of the features we've seen. Okay, so there's uh, the many, well, about three years of painful experiments uh, that, that led to this, and I'm, I'm not telling you about the de details of the experiments, right? So it's described in the paper. Okay, so then, and with this understanding, we can build a uh, simple model, but it's a model with actually quite a few uh, components, but it's just standard uh, resource allocation uh, models, and the consumer resource models, okay? But we need to introduce uh, several phases, describe each of these phases so with exponential growth, uh, there's a gross arrest when uh, acetate uh, builds up, right? And when when there's uh, when the lots of acetate is uh, excreted, right? So it can it can co it can cause gross red by 3 bo 5 or 3 bo 5 is uh, uh, it can be uh, kicked into the gross mode and eventually it's, uh, it can cycle. Okay, this is a, uh, well we have a, a most of the parameters because we measure we try to measure everything, right? And uh, this this system uh, the is in yeah it's a complicated system with a, but pretty much all parameter fixed by experiment, right? And uh, we're able to uh, reproduce uh, uh, the dynamics. Uh, this is at the end of the cycle, so uh, you see what what happens uh, for the the two densities and the concentration, which re basically re recapitulates the observation. But it also allows you to get a peek of how uh, this happens as it goes into the stable cycles, okay? And you see, you see after the first cycle, it crashes, and we have to include that and all, all of that stuff, okay? And when you include everything, I mean, it just reproduces what we observe, okay? All right, so <clears throat> the, now this is about uh, a system isolated from the uh, from the marine world, right? So then we, we since now we understand what what's uh, underlying the system. So well, maybe this is more general than that, right? As soon as you have uh, you have two, uh, so one, you have a system of one sugar eater, one acid eater, right? So the two opposing systems that Otto talked about yesterday, right? Then we produce a generically this should happen, right? So we tested this. So here uh, we took another pair of. Uh, uh, the from, uh, this is a pair of uh, strains from a, uh, from a soil bacteria isolate. Yeah. So sometimes, like these two species, they both can grow on glucose. And uh, yeah, one yeah, of yeah, them yeah. Can, so one so of, this, so what, what we're seeing is in this case is uh, one per, so when you have both sugar and uh, acid, right? Some species prefer sugar, some prefer, uh, species prefer acid. Right? But, but in, in, principle, in our they case can right consume. now, no, this case I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other cases, you yeah. can grow on both yeah. pretty decently. Yeah. So, 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 so we look at other cases, right? Yeah. So then here is one case. I have no idea whether I know. Well, I know through the monos fluorescence it grows on both uh, uh, glucose and uh, and, uh, and acetate. Okay. Although it prefers acetate, yeah. right? And uh, so we do the same kind of uh, 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 things. Uh, the this is the monoculture growth, right? So they. Uh, they they, they uh, both grow fine for, for a while, actually at a similar rate, right? And if you do um, this uh, gross dilution cycles, they reach a steady uh, state, a stable cycle, right? And uh, if you look at the pH, that's very easy to measure, and you see this a dip, right? We just throw these two, you know, we, we got the strains from Alvaro's uh, correction, and we just uh, uh, took, uh, t right? so we got some, uh, when the preferred glucose and some preferred acid, and just get them to get this. Okay, and uh, and if you look into uh, what's happening, you see the excretion of pyruvate and acetate stuff in, during the, the middle of the cycle. Yeah. So, um, if this shock is due to this osmotic internal uh, problem, if I do the experiment in um, in a hyperosmotic medium, do I delete the? Do, do you expect I delete the? So this uh, is in hyperosmotic medium already, right? So, this yeah, is so. in hyper. 
a hyper, yeah. So, so, so the same phenomenon because it, it this number goes so high. Buffer. It, it, it will shift if you change the uh, the the outside similarity. It will shift the point where, where this happened, right? But so it happens we, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So we did that for E. coli, but not not for Vibrio. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it shifts the number. Um, all right, and then uh, so 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 this uh, then then okay. So here's another try. So now we just take uh, E. coli and the Sulmonas potida that have no chance of uh, being together, right? And we fed them uh, with the glucose like the way uh, in the in in the uh, in Alvaro's, um, uh, experiment, okay? And um, we and uh, and we look at the way they were growing cells in in uh, these plates without shaking, and you see that okay, the single strain grows. Uh, the, uh, like this, and uh, they, uh, they, again, they get into uh, stable cycles, okay? And uh, during the cycle, you have the dips, okay? And uh, if you look at the, what's happening in the, uh, inside the dip, then you see the excretion of various things, okay? Yeah. Just, to, I mean, I, I think I understand the mechanism, but uh, there is something I don't understand when you say, like in Alvaro experiments, in the sense that if I understand correctly, they perform experiment with strong buffer, right? Yeah. So yeah. you yeah. should expect that in that case you don't have this. Yeah. So, so, so let me. Uh, yeah, I, I was too fast. So in this experiment, right? We uh, we we use we grew glucanac on them. So we took uh, the strains from uh, from from the soil because maybe they have no business with glucanac, right? But we still use the glucanac. Glucanac is a kind of a nice, easy way of dumping acetate into the into the medium, and you see this uh, happening. Okay, and uh, then in this experiment, right? Um, what we did was uh, feed them with glucose, okay, and with with uh, with the, the strong buffer, okay. But the thing is, uh, they were doing the experiment without shaking. Without shaking means you get into anaerobic growth, okay? And um, yeah, so then uh, if, we, if we do the shaking, all this disappears, okay? So during anaerobic growth, so much stuff, much more massive excretion is possible. It doesn't matter how much buffer you put, it's gonna break your buffer. Well, of course you can't you know, put an unreasonable amount of buffer, then you have an osmolarity problem, right? Yeah, yeah. So can you help me understand my experiments? I do them with shaking. And I see coexistence, yeah. and yeah. it's a strong buffer. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just I'm just talking about right in the script. So we we'll have to I look into. Because I remember that in the in their paper, they actually I think one thing that the the reviewers asked was exactly, oh, but you're not shaking, or do you have do you so, have right? That's the the, the pH that their measurement right. So P, you get a pH six with the amount the kind of acid you have. This is going to happen. No, no, but I remember that they, they, they made a point about uh, the fact that oxygen was, they didn't have any stratification with oxygen. You know, they have some oxygen. When you're shaking, you have something. Okay? But, you, you, we, we, but this effect, it doesn't require oxygen being zero. It's just that, we just look at a pH. I don't know, for whatever reason, pH is, right, and pH is not very high. And very, yeah, it's a kind of a six-ish, right? So between six and a, no, E. coli, normal pH is seven point something. Right, so there's at least a factor of 10 difference. So, so when with the excretion, you can easily get to a tens of millimolar, and you get into this kind of problem. Okay. So you, you have a big uh, multiplication factor. Okay. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, so summarize, right, so we have this uh, unexpected kind of a, a kind of a, 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 a metabolic exchange. Yes, so cross-feeding, ultimately, if you step away, so yes, it is cross-feeding that rescues the things. Okay, but it's not the kind of the, that's imagined in MacArthur's model, right? I mean, it's, it all depends on dynamics and, and all that stuff, right? And it kind of uh, resolves the conundrum I had in the beginning, that why should cells be excreting lots of stuff when they're happily growing? Well, they're, no, no, they're only when they're uh, stuck for some reason, in this case for acetate, right, that they start excreting stuff. Okay, they cannot use this stuff anyway, they cannot, to, they cannot grow, they cannot use it, and they dump it out, maybe somebody else could make use of it and they rescue me. Hey, Terry, can you help me explain when you showed the um, results in the very beginning, it took multiple cycles for this to happen. So why does this phenomenon not happen in the first cycle of growth between, you know, the, the degrader and the scavenger? What do you mean the first time? You know, when you, when you introduced this in the very beginning, you said that in the first... It crashes. Uh, at the first cycle, it crashes. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is actually, then we actually look into our model to see what's going on. 
right? And because we trust our model enough that it can uh, give us, and then we can do experiment to, 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 to measure, right? And uh, so uh, you can look into this model, right? So the first cycle it indeed crashes several orders of magnitude, okay? And then you start the second cycle, right? So then the, now, now A takes, it takes a lot much longer Right before you can build up, you know, it's just kind of a, this kind of a detail. I mean, eventually, you know, it, 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 yeah, the, you know, you have a stability mechanism. Eventually, the diamond finds itself to the fixed point. Yeah, a nice control would be uh, to now that you know this uh, the steady state ratio between uh, ones, or at least the start and growth ratio. If you now prepare your inoculum at the first cycle in what would be eventually the steady yes. state, then it should establish yes, from yes. the first so cycle. So we did exactly that experiment. Yeah. Right, so came. that is just first few cycles, one or two cycles, they negotiate the depletion times until right. they right. get the steady state. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, no, it is, I'm trying to cut the full talk into a half, so <laughs> uh, skipping uh, uh, some, uh, some corners, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, if you read the paper, I mean, yeah, it, it, this is all there. Um, okay. Yeah, but for, for, for some reason, uh, our reviewers really did not, did not like this work. It's just, you're talking about this cross-feeding, we all understand that. Right, that, that that's it, okay. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so, so yeah, so this is, uh, <clears throat> so this is a, uh, so 101, right, so for in this particular system, the, uh, it, by excreting this other metabolite during, during the time when it's stuck, it's actually helping itself also. At the, at the end, it's rescuing itself from death. And of course, not to mention to keep things uh, going. Um, <clears throat> all right, so key requirement here is the complementary mode of uh, central metabolism. This is not to say you pick any two uh, strains, you get it, right? But in the environment, there should be enough of a, a one type and the other type. So it's something that you can count on. There will be some assay either out there, right? And there's a chance that they, they, could, they could do a rescue me. <clears throat> right. And uh, some general lessons, right? I guess. Uh, uh, number one is uh, this is a, a co think about coexistence not as a steady state, it's just DDT equal to zero, right, but as a stable limit cycle. Uh, yeah, so even though everything looks fine, right, like critical thing is uh, happening uh, just like in a two hour window. I mean, everything is happening in a two hour window, okay, and you, otherwise you completely uh, miss it, right. So uh, suggesting experiment, we really need to do dense sampling, right, to, to catch uh, this, uh, uh, this moment. And um, uh, the a number of lessons for uh, theory, right? So this is as simple a system as you can get, right? Just because we really took it like, so, well, you know, uh, with uh, E. coli, was, uh, so my lab started with studying the lag promoters, okay? And uh, it took us several years to study the lag promoters. So basically, we said, okay, look at the simplest cross-feeding, right? We learned something, and indeed we learned something. But not sure. Uh, you know, th this is a red herring, but I mean, we'll say at least in several cases, right, it, it also happens in other systems. I'm not saying that it applies to everything, but no, it happens, right? And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so and, and maybe the uh, biggest lesson we get out of this is that the complex behavior in the community, right, can come from the combination of internal states. Okay, so each, each of these uh, species, we have only two species, each has several states, right? And, uh, and uh, all of this comes to happen is the interaction of these states, okay? So, so, so there are several variables within already one organism. It's not just growth, it's not just uh, density, okay? So there are these hidden variables, right? So that in principle, this hidden variable could contribute to uh, the complexity of the system. Okay, so that was, uh, that was the lesson. And uh, yeah, so let me wrap up uh, yeah, this part, right? So uh, yeah, Kapil uh, was the a hero of this work, and Avanish uh, now is a theorist that actually, uh, I did not think there's a chance to describe a complex system like that, was actually, but then I guess we have enough parameters that we put it in, it actually just, just kind of uh, work together, okay, uh, roughly well. Yeah, and uh, uh, we saw his lab for metabolomics, and uh, without Otto, uh, none of this would have uh, ever uh, happened, right? so. <coughs> Uh, yeah, so very, uh, it's very happy. So this is our first kind of a uh, ecology uh, uh, project, so dipping our toes into into the world of interacting bacteria. Um, so now I'm going to switch gear and talk about 
uh, some uh, elaboration of the ideas that I learned from this, okay? Because when, when the first time I talked about this was at a KITP, and uh, basically the message people got is, oh, it's really complicated. <laughs> Terry, look at a simple system and it's really complicated, right? And everybody was pressing me, can you distill some more lessons out of this? Okay, you can describe this in some simple way. And we took it as a challenge, right? And uh, Arvind uh, Murugan uh, was uh, uh, at the KITP program uh, together and we discussed a lot and then we, we sort of uh, cooked up something else, and then, which is, uh, so I would say this is inspiration uh, based on uh, uh, this concrete uh, project, right? So again, I would say that, okay, so the, uh, if you look into the dynamics of this, so now I'm looking, using the model that Avani's constructed for the system, right, uh, as the, the actual system, because we cannot possibly measure, have the growth rate the, of the two species in every point, right, but then the model recovers the uh, dynamics pretty well, so we're using that. And we see quite a few regions, okay, where there's a lag for 101, then the growth, and the this and that, okay, and they come from interaction with different phases of a, of a 101 or 305. You know, each has like a two phases, two, three phases, and they interact to produce a number of these states. Okay. Why is it that you don't have negative growth here? Some of the, some of the bugs die at some yeah, stages. Yeah. So here I'm talking about the stable cycle, whether or not I dying. see. Yeah, okay. So then we're, then we're saying, well, can we, can we uh, uh, distill this into, uh, we're only talk about stable cycle, not the approach uh, to the cycle. Okay. Given that we know there's a stable cycle, can we say something? Uh, kind of uh, more transparent about this, rather than giving all of the details, right? Um, <clears throat> so then uh, we sort of uh, uh, looked around, and so here's a kind of an illuminating plot. So here, instead of plotting the density, we are looking at the nutrients uh, that, that's being cross-fed and everything, right? So pyruvate, acetate, and a group neck, and you see kind of a nice uh, uh, cycling, okay? And this, this uh, plot, sort of made us think, oh, it just looked like there's some way, right, to reparameterize uh, the system with some variable that's maybe more illuminating, okay? And we played around again, and we came up with uh, uh, basically the two variants of the same thing. One you can think about as the amount of a nutrient that's remaining in the system, right? And uh, uh, th 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 that's harder to, to, to measure, and uh, the, the, uh, the negative of that is just the amount of biomass. Okay, so biomass kind of uh, uh, progresses, uh, you know, increases uh, you know, throughout these phases. And then, uh, so if we use biomass as the uh, x-axis instead of time, right, well, then we will get a plot like this. Okay, it, it kind of, uh, it's like this plot, but it, it, it emphasizes different regime, right? So, for example, uh, in this initial waiting regime, uh, you hardly see it, okay? But it's a very critical regime that's a little blip here, right, it's amplified much more. Okay, so then and it kind of a, it's a different way to telling uh, the story. Okay, and so so looking at that as a biomass. All right, so then we uh, took from there and we built a what we call a community state model, right? And uh, in this model, then we, uh, so we put it. Uh, okay, so community has a number of states, okay, that we call uh, the uh, community state, right? And the organism behaves in a species specific way in the different states. <laughs> and uh, then the, the, uh, the community state is assigned depending on the total biomass density. That, that's the OD of the uh, system, okay? So that's the, that's the x-axis, okay? So then the, uh, we, can get into, we, can, we can get into that, but no, certainly, uh, biologically speaking, biomass density is an uh, important variable for the system. If, you pick, uh, if I'm going to pick one variable to get the state, to get a sense of the state of the system, biomass will probably be uh, on okay, any, any physiologist's the top five choices. Uh, of something that's indicative, right? Because as biomass increase, excretion increase, oxygen decrease, a lot of things happen, okay? And it's also detectable by cells through quantum sensing system, things like that, right? Um, <clears throat> but then, but we, what, what we're intending this to be is an example of, of a some variable that reflects the state of the system that the cell can respond to, okay? Yeah. Um, when you have the biomass sort of community biomass as a relevant parameter, can you then, if I always keep my OD between 0.2 and 0.4? Uh, the, the what? If I always keep, keep my community biomass as an OD between like 0.2 yeah. and 0.6, yeah. I always get 
one AO one to grow faster. Yeah. So infinity. so 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 in, in, in a model, if I if I take this kind of thing and feed it into model, it, it will it will produce the dynamics. Right? So it's a kind of a self consistent way of describing the effort to try to simplify the dynamics. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, but certainly, if I just give some random stuff, it, it's it's going to crash. Right. So so I think of it as a given that we already know there is a cycle going on. Right, and there's a bet that okay, biomass uh, uh, captures uh, 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 this uh, this uh, this progression, right? And we we'll try to let's see if we can reconstruct the dynamics. Right? Um, okay, so then in this model, uh, we the density is only variable, okay, and yeah. No, I was wondering if uh, maybe to <clears throat> uh, finally uh, check that the communication that says happening to all acetate and so on, we can try to uh, culture the, the cells independently, but, but we controlling the nutrient profile by the, what the model yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, this is not a, no, uh, a bottom-up picture. This is, so, so yes, that, that's what we did in the first half when we talk about you know, all of these things. So, we, so, so this is an effort to try to see whether we can, we, we can, we can make this system simpler. So we're describing a way that's simpler. Just yeah, of, of, of course, I mean, the, the cell, uh, they're not responding. In the system, we know what they respond to. They're not responding to biomass. No, right? but what I was saying is, like, we can try to simulate uh, um, uh, cells A aff effects on, on cells B yeah. by yeah. us controlling the nutrient condition of cell B without, say, yeah, 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 cell yeah. A. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's what we file. did. That's what we did. Right, but not not here. Here we expertly try to get to a minimal description, try to you know get rid of as many things as possible. We don't want to measure nutrient. Okay, and just to to, to see at you know, at some level, could we put together a self-consistent picture? Okay, <clears throat> and uh, okay. So in this model, then each species grow with a rate. Uh, each species alpha grows with a rate r alpha, and uh, and it's just dependent on the total. Uh, it's just responding to the total biomass. Okay, and then there's the dilution, the fact that the uh, when it reaches. So we still think about gross dilution uh, cycle, right, and uh, 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 looking for uh, stable cycles and things like that. Okay, so the key is in what is the uh, the choice of this function. Okay, so uh, so okay, so for some examples, so here we actually have a measurement to say, okay, so this function like that, right? The uh, you can use this kind of a uh, this kind of a approach, this kind of a uh, say stepwise kind of function to describe a uh, system like a uh, dioxide shift. That's what the uh, Jeff Gors uh, lab is doing, right? And Sergey's been doing that. So this already 50 years ago, uh, Simon, uh, not Simon, uh, Bruce Levine uh, has already uh, described uh, such uh, pictures for, for uh, uh, two uh, bacterial species uh, <coughs> on a single uh, nutrient source. Okay, just a simple, simple way to, to, to describe this. Okay, so uh, theoretically, I would say this is the simplest way to close the system. Right? You, have a, you have a growth, you have, to have a, or you have to have a cell density, right? And uh, then what, how do you specify growth rate? Okay, so then the simplest way to close it is uh, with, uh, with uh, density. Right? Um, all right, so uh, the, the, in principle, you could, you could have uh, arbitrary uh, this kind of uh, functions, and this function is used to describe all kinds of things, not necessarily nutrient. That's the point, right? Nutrient, if you have a, a specific example uh, with dioxide shift, so forth, you can write, construct such a function, but you can have other stuff that does not allow you to uh, uh, write down, in, there's no, mo no kinetics, right? And then you can still just specify growth rate. You can still do, try to do something like that, okay? And uh, so, uh, uh, so let me describe these, uh, uh, several progression of this model. So in the simplest model, we call the diagonal preference model. That is, um, so we have, uh, we divide the uh, community into a number of states. So here's the interval of a biomass growth uh, from, uh, from beginning to, to dilution time. Okay, so and normalized to one. Okay. And uh, it, we divide it into a number of uh, regions. And uh, so each region has some uh, width, uh, dot, uh, uh, eta and um, uh, indexed by n, and uh, in each region, species has a, uh, some growth rate, okay? And in the simplest model, just uh, one region is one species of good uh, growing at, okay? <clears throat> so this is uh, for one species, maybe another species growing in region five, this species growing in region seven, so for with some growth rate, okay? 
And uh, so then the way to, uh, to, to put all of this information together, uh, and, and in the simplest case, the, 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 these uh, beans are uh, uniform. If you have 10 species, then they're just divided into 10 pieces. Okay? And uh, then we just have two growth rate. When it's, when it's in its zone, it's growing at a fast rate. When it's not in its zone, it grows at some slow rate. Okay? So it's a prior, it's a, now we have a N, uh, so we have an N-body, N-species system with single parameter, that's just the gross preference ratio of the, uh, the, the gross rate in the favored state and the not favored state, okay? And uh, so what does it do? So you can follow, you can do the dynamics, very easily defined, you can, you can, you can do the dynamics. And, um, and then after a number of cycles, then you see that this dynamics, uh, it just favors the early uh, species. So immediately you see a pioneering effect. That in this case, uh, only basically first or second species will survive. Okay. Um, there's a uh, uh, yeah. So there's a lot of uh, analytics you can do. This is this kind of system simple enough. So you can see how many will survive, and you can then you can say, well, then in this sense, obviously um, the pioneers have unfavorable so unfair advantage. I mean, it's growing and it's keep on growing uh, later. Right. So then uh, then you can do a a uh, case with non-uniform uh, being with or with a non-uniform uh, growth rate preference uh, at the different uh, these, uh, uh, stages, and uh, then you can get them into uh, coexistence, all right? And uh, so you can, you can derive expression of what does it take to get them all into coexistence and their stability and all that. You can say quite a bit of us, makes quite a bit of statements about, about such uh, systems, right? So here, I'm just emphasizing the uh, early bird effect, right? That, the later species, if you want to join a party and be kept in a party, you have to contribute a lot if you're coming late. Right? And it, this tells you quantitatively how much you have to contribute right, in, in this uh, simple model. Right? So remember, this is now I'm talking about a single parameter. Right? Uh, this model is a single parameter. Right? And then it's making some statements about stability. <clears throat> right? So now you can make it more complicated, you can, uh, put in some noise, right? and then you see uh, that uh, so now instead of uh, just two numbers, I can put 30% noise in the in, in the favored growth rate, in the disfavored growth rate, put 30% noise in the bean width, and so forth, and it's pretty uh, the system are pretty stable. Okay, I'm not going to uh, go through the, uh, the, the details, uh, but then one thing, and the, okay, so this instead of uh, changing the bean width, you can have different growth rate biases. Okay, uh, yeah, and, and you get the similar uh, result, and so here is a uh, part of a. Uh, the fraction of a surviving species uh, as a function of uh, and the number of species and for different growth preferences. Of course, for high growth preferences, uh, then it, uh, uh, it, it's always uh, uh, all of the species are stable. You can get down to as low as a, uh, you know, a growth preference of a five, and you still have a, you know, a quite a bit of a, a, a species uh, in the party. Okay, and uh, so 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 one lesson here is actually. You know, unlike uh, the uh, typical consumer resource model, if, if you put in a growth rate that's very large, it just wipe out everybody else. But in this case, it doesn't. Because even if you can grow fast, you're limited to one zone. Okay, so you, you do not take over the world. Okay. <clears throat> uh, all right, so then uh, we can say, so this is still very simple in that there's no frustration in the system. It's just a diagonal model. Right? So now you can build in frustration by, say, basically populating this grid with uh, random plus and minus everywhere. Okay? And there are different ways to uh, do it. Uh, I'm, I'm just puzzled by your statement that uh, your superbug will not take over. In a real community, it will because it's not following this. Well, what's a real community? Well, what is a real community is the one where the states are defined by resource depletion times. So you somehow made a transition from resource depletion times to this artificial thresholds, uh, and you made a caveat that this artificial thresholds in biomass are an emergent property. Once a community self-organized to a state, it decides on those thresholds, which you put a, well, a point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. In reality, it's the resource depletion times which self-organize, and wait, we understand wait, how they We do. have to have a reality check first. What is real? What you think is real may not be real. I mean, consumer resource model may not be real, right? No, 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 but uh, all I'm saying is that this is kind of a toy model with this thresholds imposed on it, yeah. and then you're saying your toy model, the yeah, that's all, which that's grows fast without In this likes. world, it, 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 doesn't, it, it doesn't take over, right? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> 
And the, the underlying philosophical point is that how much of this is dominated, how much of a community growth is dominated by exponential growth. That, that's the key. Well, you also have exponential growth everywhere in this model. It's just that those regions where it grows are defined by those thresholds which are dictated by the total biomass, yeah, you, you which can, is... You can, I mean, I can set the growth, I mean, I can make it you know, hundredfold. Uh, the, what matters in this model is the ratio of, of the, the favorable and unfavorable model uh, I, of growth, right? I'm and I can still set it puzzled by low. this biomass thresholds. You said that this is some of artificial, you know, you don't really believe that in your community, which you studied in detail, those thresholds are there for uh, fundamental reasons. You said mm -hmm. that the system organized with depletion times to give you the behavior you have in a steady state, and okay. that I understand. And then you kind of switch to this uh, biomass thresholds, which is where I kind of lost you. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, so the point is we're trying to understand a community, right? And, uh, and uh, so I would say so far there's no understanding. We do not understand uh, these things, right? We have, we spent like uh, five years working on one system, right? And the lesson we got is that it's more complicated than you think. There are different phases, okay? And then, and then here I'm trying to, trying to describe these different phases. That's the key. The different regions, the different phases coming from interaction with species. And uh, you know, the, then I'm trying to make a simplest way, just using that idea, right? And let's see where we can get to. But the same different phases exist in the consumer resource model. You have those times when what we call temporal niches, right? The, yeah. the so times when a particular subset of nutrients. Everything we can do here, you can do with consumer resource model. Just much more complicated, right? So if I want right. to get, a, get something to grow in this one region, you, yeah, you can play with the parameter the metric, get to that, right? Here's just a single parameter. Then I can use this to explore what will happen. It's not possible to explore. Uh, in a consumer resource model to, no, to, to see this kind of phase. No, I'm, but I'm any, always in favor of a toy down, model. I'm always in favor of a toy model. The toy model doesn't, doesn't explain why the bug which grows fast everywhere doesn't take over. That's all I want to say. No, but you, you, you can basically you can produce uh, some region where, I mean, if you uh, can cook up a model where, where uh, things are cut off, right? The grow, growth can be limited. So the Vibrio will not take over in your toy model. Yeah, that the Vibrio will not, yeah, right, so, right. Um, okay, so so uh, so okay, so now we're getting so it's not a single parameter model anymore so with some noise, right? And then uh, uh, so now we're going to okay, so I, I'm wrapping up just very quickly. We have two different versions of a random preference model, right? So uh, here's the example. So you have basically you randomly put down stuff. Okay, you can do, you can imagine doing this two ways, right? One is that the, for so each of these states, it can support say k species. Okay, then you can look at what, what happens. Okay, there, then, then um, and, and, uh, and then the, what you expect is the number of surviving species will be n over k. Because you know, if k is one, then everybody uh, uh, survives. We already in this, we adjust for this uh, priority effect so that every species survives. So now you put in competition, and it's, it is doing a bit better than uh, n over k. And uh, if you look at uh, who is surviving, who is not, so the uh, blue guy here is surviving, the, the red ones are the ones that did not survive. And you can see very clearly, right, is, uh, even though each state in, the, uh, in this uh, system, uh, every state has a four uh, a species that's growing, right? So the ones that survive are the ones that can live in more states. So basic generals are selected. Okay, in this case, because, we, because it's, the, it's not about competition within, but then if I can grow in more of these states, well, then I get to uh, uh, survive. Um, <clears throat> right, and then if you take that into account, right, so then you say each species can grow uh, in k states. So they have the same kind of a general, uh, g g generalizability, okay, they can, uh, okay, and, uh, and then you look at it. Okay, so now you can see that uh, uh, the half of the species uh, could survive. So uh, it's for as many of us, uh, say, 10 uh, uh, species growing in the, in the same state. Okay, and uh, as you can also analyze a bit to look at uh, uh, what, what is uh, driving, uh, preferring the uh, surviving species, and uh, they turn out to be the, the surviving species in purple here. They're, well, the, the ones that got extinct, they're the ones that had to compete with more, uh, more uh, species in a given state. Okay, so the average share of a state is less. Anyway, so the point here, yeah, is that uh, the you can you can even with competition, uh, this so basically you still get feature of the diagonal model. A lot of uh, states uh, survive, 
and uh, uh, to, uh, I guess, uh, towards that end, we call these community states as dynamical niches. I mean, I try to avoid the word niche as much as possible because it's, it's undefined, but people have the idea sort of one niche uh, per species, and certainly uh, these uh, states can, uh, in this model, can uh, many species, uh, yeah, one, one, one of these uh, three gate can support the order of one uh, species, right? Okay, so I am done. Uh, the, okay, you have a question about this? Uh, uh, about the model. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, no, it's, it's on. Um, nice, in the sense that, um, so we see many things in experiments, even with pairwise uh, competition in uh, uh, one resource. And um, for example, we see by stability, competitive, for competitive exclusion, coexistence, or so we see many things in the experiment. So the question is, how many of these things this model can reproduce? Yeah, so this model is agnostic to resource. There's like the purpose, I mean, almost, a, so oh, we do not know in, about resource. If you're, yeah. one, let's say, here you're in a state, let's say you have one resource, like in Alvaro's experiments. Yeah, yeah. And for example, we see by stability. Can you reproduce by stability with this model? So, no, no, so, 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 in this generalized model that I'm talking about uh, in the second part, there is no resource. So I cannot, so it's not intent to explain that you, you have so many resources that does this, and then what happens, you put this together and, and, and do that, right? So it's simply, I like it's, it, 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 it's, uh, we're trying to see what we can do without, what statement we can make without resource, okay? And the, state, the kind of statement I've shown you are the ones that concern stability. Right. How many species can uh, accommodate? What the interrelation between species growing in the, uh, in the early and the late, so forth, on how many species can accommodate? What about the competition uh, within a niche? That kind of a statement. Right. But absolutely nothing on resource. But the growth and outgrowth could be due to resource, or it could be due to you know, any number of other things. Yes, but yeah. even in this, let's say, world where we don't care about resources, uh, uh, you don't always see coexistence. You, what? When you when you have two species and you put them together, whatever whatever is the medium, you not always see coexistence or competitive exclusion. There is a third state. Yeah. That is so, the so so you know, it's like you know a, a phenomenological model. That is, a, I already know there's a phenomena, right? And I want to say something more about well, if there's one, if the phenomena is going to happen. Well, how does it happen? And uh, and uh, uh, you know what happens when you change uh, uh, certain features. Okay, but it cannot address me if you put something together whether, whether uh, the system is stable or not stable, nor are we assuming that it's stable. The, well, applying a cyclic constraint, given that I know the system is going to be stable, it right, could be arbitrarily complicated, here's the simplest way to produce a, uh, such a thing, right? And then what, what's the interrelation between those? So it, it's kind of a, it, it, you, we already have a lots of models trying to answer uh, the, 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 uh, uh, these uh, uh, special questions, right? But we're trying to just look at the uh, other type of a uh, uh, question. Can address. Okay, so let me, let me finish. I'm going to, anyway, to discussion. I think a lot of the uh, point is about the philosophy underlying the, the model, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, right, so just to summarize this on my last slide. Uh, right, so I, what I described is a phenomenological model, right? And it, it allows us to do dynamics in a simple way, right? And uh, so, the community states, right, uh, seen as the dynamic initials, and since it uh, come from the combination of the different phases, right, so it, it's, it's going to be, if you have n species, at least you, you have a, the, at least of the order of two n of, of uh, 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 such uh, states. Uh, biomass density, right, is a designated as a state variable, I mean, it's both for mathematical reason and I think for, for biological reason, we're going to pick one thing, it, 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 it could be that. Uh, mechanistic, we know cells have a ways to measure uh, the total density through quantum sensing and so forth. Okay, but we're not insisting that's only it's an example of of, of, of uh, some some feature that reflects the overall uh, state of the community. Right, and uh, yeah, so it, it, the, the, I think what what do we gain with this model? I think mainly it's a convenient way to explore. Uh, uh, relation. Right? So as I said, anything that's been done here could be done by a consumer resource model, but nobody will use consumer resource model to ask this kind of question. I mean, the, the, I mean you, can, you can randomly generate a parameter, right? but it's difficult to, to get into this type of a you know, complex dynamical regime. Okay? Um, <clears throat> 
the, right, so and, and a number of specific things we find from, from the specific model we use, right? One is a quantitative description of the early bird effect and its criteria, right? A, uh, the, uh, that the, the, no, maybe the superbug uh, is uh, limited in its, uh, its uh, effect. And uh, the, uh, no, the, the, then the, the interesting competition, uh, things like that for this uh, random model. But all of this is done with very few parameters. Okay, so you can, you can make statements about these things. Um, <clears throat> so, and finally, I think uh, this was constructed on purpose to shift away from taxonomical classification. All I need from, uh, from this uh, from a bug is I don't need to know its first name, last name, just how fast it's growing in, 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 some, uh, in, in some conditions. Okay? And, uh, uh, yeah, so it can predict community dynamics in, in such a simple world, right? and it could be rather complex. And, uh, and the, but the, I think the, importantly, it's calls for uh, certain measurements, right? It's still calls for measurement in between the, uh, in between the cycle uh, uh, at the different regions and uh, the, the uh, growth rate and, uh, and the, uh, the growth rate of each species and the biomass of the species, okay? And uh, given these, in immediate one can make predictions, right, and about the dynamics and when compared to experiments. That's the uh, that's the uh, features. Okay, so uh, yeah, so Sergey yesterday uh, talked about the difference between <laughs> astrology and astronomy, right? So I think we are still very much in biology in the in the left on the left hand side. We care about the names of things, the names of the nutrient, names of the organism, and so forth, right? But hopefully, at some point, we can transition to where we're describing. This by mathematics, but to do that, we need to find some variable, right? So I'm not. So certainly, this is the very first attempt. But we're trying to do it without using names, without using resource, and we're trying to just uh, introduce some numbers. Okay. So uh, this is a uh, uh, fun work. It's been uh, done together with uh, Avanish. Uh, uh, he just graduated. This is at Stanford right now, and uh, Arvind Murugan at the Chicago. And uh, we have the, had, had the lots of discussion with the colleagues at the interface of the ecology and, the, and the physics. And I hope to get a lot more input from you uh, from here. All right, thank you. <clears throat>